Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming. And uh, the next workshop, or the next talk we have here is uh, orchestrating EBPF programs in Fedora and Kubernetes by Daniel. Take it away. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Thank you, everybody, for coming here. My name is Daniel Mellado. Um, I'm a principal, principal software engineer uh, working on OpenShift flexibility as well as emerging technologies as well as Fedora in Red Hat. Um, just wanted to speak a little bit with you about like uh, a new project that we have been kicking up uh, called BPFMan and how we integrate that into Fedora. So first of all, what is eBPF? Uh, there's been a lot of a hype with that. So it's like cloud in the back in the day. So everybody said, hey, cloud, everything should be cloud native. Now it's eBPF. So what this is uh, thing? So eBPF is stands for Extended Berkeley Packet Filter. Uh, it's been around since uh, Linux kernel for something, so it's not nothing new. Um, originally, funny thing, this was originally intended to be the new backend for TCP dump, and it evolved like basically a lot. Um, how does this work? So, like, uh, what is it used for? So basically, this allows you to run what is called a VM or a sandbox in the kernel, and you can run things over there, which would be just so much faster. Uh, this has been really meant to be used slightly by mainly networking, observability, and so on. So uh, you can see how this could work. Uh, so what do we have over here? So how the hell do I create a, a new EBPF program? So if I'm a developer, I can just go and create my um, EBPF program in C or whatsoever, and then we need to convert that to uh, compile that using LLVM that would generate a compiled uh, EBPF program. And what happens over here is that we got three main components that you need to be aware of. So the first of all, uh, EBPF programs are event-driven. So basically, they react on things that happens in the machine. So for instance, in the most basic use case, let's assume that you want a packet to be around and do something. So uh, you would need a hook that would uh, get attached to some I mean, a packet is received filter. Um, and then it will react. Then uh, once that we got a hook, um, you load it using any of the available uh, EBPF libraries, such as libbpf, AIA, in Rust, or whatsoever. Um, and then what happens is that once that uh, this EBPF code is working based on the hook, it will trigger this helper. A helper function is uh, a, a subset of limited things that it could do, for instance, forward packets or do whatsoever. And at the same of loading, it also goes through a thing called a verifier. A verifier makes sure that the EBPF program runs to an end, that there is no weird loops and something like that. But usually people don't interact with EBPF code at such level, but rather use a much more, more complex um, tooling such as Cilium. Everybody knows about Cilium these days and CNI. And also like uh, Pixie and so forth for observability. So what I want to make sure here is that you understand the workflow. So on the, over the kernel space, we go and we attach to an EBPF hook. Uh, it gets over there. Uh, we also have a thing called a map. A map is a memory structure that is used to um, basically share data in between user space and kernel space. And once it gets deployed, it goes through the verifier and magic, it works. Uh, that's TLDR. Uh, then comes Fedora and the EBFC group. So uh, late 2023, we created a new C group, so a special interest group for working with Fedora. We are a matrix, so feel free to join us and so forth. And we identified BPFMAN as the first project to work into because uh, this was basically like um, solving certain use cases that we would need for, uh, to use in BPF that wasn't working out of the blue. EBPF manager, what happens? Uh, so suddenly we got a lot of different EBPF applications. Uh, you can use Cilium, you can use Pixie, Skip Armor, uh, there's also network observability. But how can I make sure that they all work uh, at the same time? So there's a lot of different components that could go over there. And just think about what ha would happen if you want to run an EBPF application that would get ho a hook of a specific um, network interface. Uh, what would happen if I got a, a new one that would just try to do so? It just wouldn't work. Uh, same for security. I was speaking about the verifier, but so far there's no, I mean, there's some working uh, under the hood 
to, uh, to basically sign a MVPF program, but so far you are not able to verify that the, those programs aren't messed in between. So if you download something, okay, let's use this. It may be also tweaked. And there's no, uh, the, th the second thing is also security. Most of these programs, they run as root, and so far the kernel doesn't provide you to a proper separation with the kernel already. Uh, we got kernel capabilities for sure and so forth, but so far, cap BPF, if you go into the code, it maps to cap root, so it's basically not doing anything. Uh, also, what I was saying, there are some hooks that may try to get the same interface, and then boom. Um, um, even if we fix that by trying to use an RBAC, yes, it'll be just a mess. So, so there goes BPF man. Uh, this is our super fancy logo. We'll be speaking with the Fedora team to change it probably, but anyway. <laughs> and this is an open source project that was uh, first started by the Emerging Technologies Group. Uh, it's an open source and it has been uh, part of the CNCF since June 2024. It's a sandbox project, so it's open source for free, come try, uh, come contribute. And this basically allows you to load and to do a lot of different things from BPF. So I'm not sure if anybody is aware of uh, BPF Top, which was just released by Netflix not too long ago. It's a stop of our BPF. We also support that, and you don't have to install any additional programs. So let's assume that I just want to load something. Hey, BPF, please deploy this traffic control uh, over there and do the network. It'll just do the loading for you, create everything, and you'll be happy, and you wouldn't have to, to go through all this stuff. It integrates with Kubernetes. Uh, that's also a new hype, but it's super fancy and super cool. I got a demo if I have the time. But basically, you could use every filter in Kubernetes. You could say, okay, I want to deploy my specific EPPF program into this node and apply uh, this label and do whatever you'd like to into Kubernetes. And so we have an operator, which is written in Go, that handles everything with you. The second thing is that also it works with OCI registries. So you can, rather than putting all your code over there, you can just load the EPPF uh, code from the OCI registry, like Quay, and tell, hey, don't load it, and it'll work. We integrate with 6R2, and that's important because we, you can just uh, basically sign your code and we'll, we'll verify that it, has, it hasn't been messed up. And last but not least, it also works with open telemetry, which is a good thing because uh, uh, you can just get telemetry data out of that in a lot of different formats, and not only Prometheus remote write, but also open telemetry. Okay, so far so good. Uh, how the hell do we package this for Fedora? So uh, the main component is written in Rust. And we have been working with the Rustic a lot. Uh, but there's some difficulties. Let's go through that. So we have a lot of different packages that were missing in Fedora. Uh, I'm not sure if I, anybody here is a Rust developer or know how Rust development works in, in Fedora. But basically, you can switch in between, like, hey, I want to package it all. That was our first approach. And it was somehow messy because we went into a dependency hell. Suddenly, we noticed that there were half a couple of dependencies that were missing in Fedora. Some of those were too new, uh, some of those were too old, and well, although we could somehow work this around, uh, we are using AIA, which is a BPF library based in Rust 2 in Fedora. AIA was in package, so we went through a dependency hell. Okay, this didn't work. Don't go that path. Uh, it'll make you suffer incredibly, and it's gonna be, well, can be improved. So we decided to go bundle everything. It has a caveat that we'll have to support everything to uh, ourselves, but at least we could go over here most of the time. Uh, so let's say star again, caveat. Six star isn't packaged in Fedora either, uh, so it comes with a lot of dependencies, and also we were using bundled OpenSSL in Rust. Don't go that way, it's a total anti-pattern. We just moved it back because it would uh, bundle a lot of um, security dependencies that are weak, so we got some elective cipher that isn't meant, blah, 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 blah. Hell, don't just bundle them all and modify what's needed. Uh, we got, um, I mentioned here, but we got a Vaxilla. Maybe it's gonna be at some point replaced by Jira or whatever, but uh, um, we are working into that and I'll be available to, during the conference to work on that if somebody wants to help. Um, but basically we need to modify them on the fly. Now, operator. So I mentioned that we got an operator, this works on Kubernetes, and we are all happy. You can just deploy this in a total easy way. Uh, I'm gonna be showing this around, so I'm gonna be somehow quick on here. But it works basically with every Kubernetes cluster over 119, and even works with kind. So if you don't have anything, just deploy kind, and it'll work for you. Uh, you just can deploy the, our operator using OLM or whatever you'd like to. It's just the same of any other operator, and it would handle for you. 
uh, and we have a custom resource, in case you don't know what a custom resource is, please raise your hand here and explain, but it's a way to extend the Kubernetes API, and we got one of those for every resource uh, type in eBPFs. So TLDR, there's different kind of programs in eBPF, XTP, which stands for Express Data Path, those are mainly related to networking, traffic control, and so on. So we got a traffic control CR, we got um, an XTP CR, and so forth. So this is super quickly, I'll go over the design a little bit, but uh, basically we, we got an agent, which is not surprise anybody, which stands on every node, and it's uh, getting um, all, everything what happened, we are, we are um, this is reconciling what happens in terms of EPF code and deploying, uh, getting back to the, to the kubelet um, and it'll just magically work and do that works for you. As I'm going to be doing a demo, I don't, don't want to go too, too deep into this unless anybody's really interested and then we can just take off this session. This is the workflow I was speaking to you. So let's say I want my user, I want to create an XTP program. Uh, you just go create the general file the agent would monitor what happens, and if it's um, modified, it works all that. Uh, that's basically it, and we got a couple of different status that I'll be showing you later on too. Those are the different CRD types. Uh, I mentioned uh, TC and XTP, but there's also a lot of those that are different because um, I mentioned that you need a hook, but if there's no specific hook that would fit your need, you can create a probe. There's a user probes and kernel probes, so we also got support for all of these. And uh, let's go to the demo. Let's see if it works. Just let me know if you can see this. Is it too small? Is it big? A little bigger. How about now? Perfect. Okay, so we are so fancy to allow you to, and you make file. Let's assume you want to run this on kind or your laptop whatsoever. You don't have access to a Kubernetes cluster, uh, even though this would also work with a kubectl file. So, oh, you see this is kind of super fast. I uh, just didn't trust the network, so I mocked this part up. But let's assume we deployed the cluster, or deployed the can, this just works. And let's see what happens. I've got a couple of examples here. This is just a, a YAML file containing some uh, eBPF code. As I told you that this was an XTP. This means that this type is an express data path program. And uh, it has a priority, which is important because that allows us to have run different programs at the same time, but the one with the most priority would get access to the interface and so forth. Uh, you can also select, as I was saying, you can use any Kubernetes no, uh, labels, such as node selector, so you could define in which node from the cluster this is gonna be running into. And also, uh, if you see the image, uh, let's note that we support also local file, but this comes from Quay. So this would just get downloaded from Quay, upload it into the cluster, and it'll just run the BPF code that we wanted to. Uh, also, so far, this is a privileged container, uh, because as it shouldn't surprise you, you need to be a super user to run anything regarding eBPF into here. That's something we are speaking about and working into to avoid that. So let's apply this. It created a program, but let's go a little bit deeper into this. Uh, it's, you see that you could use just any uh, kubectl command, such as for any resource. So now we, we got a new BPF function called XTP stats, and it's so far it's reconciling, so it's making sure that it's not going, up, it's already there, uh, so the operator is doing the work under the hood. And now if you can get it again, with a little, with a little bit more of detail, you'll see that it's now working. Uh, you get uh, the primary node in this phase, uh, it's pulling the image. Uh, you can see the last translation. It's reconciled. It succeeded. And you can just now go and see every eBPF program running on the cloud cluster, not only the node. Okay, surprise, working. And last but not least, I also wanted for you to take a little peek about like uh, all uh, these uh, components that are running within the cluster. So we run a demo, which is speaking uh, gRPC. We are getting rid of those, actually, and also we are splitting the BPF man code into two different repos because we decided that it was a little bit too messy to have both the 
<coughs> Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes operator and the binary of the same repo. So now we are splitting those out. And also we are modifying a new thing for the new release, which is like we'll be supporting for you to have a whole YAML file with all the different kind of PPF programs that you'd like to use. So be it XDPTC whatsoever, because so far this is a little bit messy because you would need to uh, apply different YAMLs, all different same kind. Uh, as we are trying to orchestrate BPF code, we decided that it was a little bit messy and decided to basically support that the user would be able to do whatever they wanted to and um, orchestrate as much as the programs that they would, like, they would like to. And then, last but not least, let's go over the CRD. As you, you saw, uh, I already told you that we got a, um, a custom resource per uh, eBPF program type. So you see like XDP programs, you prove trace points and so forth. And this is just using the operator, but I also wanted to go quickly. Um, well, this is scripted because I didn't trust the network, but I'm going to do uh, a real life one. So go with me if it doesn't work. Uh, is the uh, font big enough here too? Is it okay? Cool. So for instance, we got this uh, program. Let's do another one. Uh, as you see, I'm also doing, being a super user here, so you, you can also modify these by, you know, doing RBAC processes and, and permissions, so that should be okay, but I didn't do. So let's modify this to also load another one. If now we list those out, this is the same output that you would have, for instance, from BPF top, without actually having to rely on that, because you could use a BPF man not only for uh, telling you what's going on, but also to load and load the programs within your uh, same node. And you could also tell that to do a lot of more things. Uh, just for the sake of this, I wanted you to be aware of what's, go what's going on. We got two different uh, Express Data Path programs, so how networking runs. Um, mm, they, they do have different priority, and you can also unload those. Let's assume, okay, so let's unload those. Uh, what's the ID 174, for instance? Now we list and it works. Um, I guess that's more or less a big, a, qu a quick and dirty overview about the BPF man, and the, the operator side, the CLI side, and what the work that we did into. But I'll be available to speak about this in detail because I didn't want for this session to be that deep into a BPF, just a quick overview. Uh, so with this, let me see if I can delete the terminal, uh, or move it back. Questions? Go ahead. So yesterday I saw a presentation by the Inspector Gadget Project that seems to be BPF and Kubernetes orchestration. How does I, this compare to things like that? I missed the uh, session from yesterday because I was stuck at New York airport, but I definitely want to catch up on that. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we can speak about that within the week. Um, you mentioned like a, a bunch of other applications using BPF before BPF man. How do you, uh, orchestrate like BPF programs from those other applications? You have to like register them with BPF man or something? So that's a little bit different. I mean, I didn't want to do that in the demo, but we could also show uh, BPF programs that are not handled and loaded by BPF man. But we can also show those. Um, I can show later with a quick app, uh, using an XDP loader for instance. It'll show both and you could be able also to delete things and phone. But we haven't tested this yet. For instance, we haven't tested it with a CNI. That may be too big. But the idea is that uh, you will be able to basically orchestrate it over all the whole, your, your whole Kubernetes cluster uh, without having to rely on you know, um, a multiple number of operators. So for instance, you would have to have your demo set with the CNI doing eBPF things and so forth, and you will be able to use this as a whole cluster orchestrator. Any other questions? Feel free to raise your hand. Lock this out. Oh, here we go. Of course. 
Um, you you kind of glossed over like BPF signing. Is that something that's going to be on like your roadmap or yeah, totally. something you're thinking about? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you are aware of the BPF token. Uh, for instance, I spoke a little bit with some meta guys too, and I know that you do, you do your BPF loading, and just please correct me later if I'm wrong. You overwrite basically. You got one BPF program, then overwrite, run, 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 and so forth. And that's something we wanted to do in a little bit of a different way. So TLDR, BPF man would be somehow mimicking Podman, and it would be the, the Podman for BPF applications. But we can speak about BPF token and so forth later on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Okay.